you've just been you've just been so vocal. I know a lot of things are just annoying you about what you're hearing in the news. So I want to get your take. Let's start with the summit of the BRICS, uh, August 22nd, the big day. I mean, they we don't know what's really going to unfold, but part of their plan is perhaps a reserve currency backed by gold. Your thoughts, is this just, you know, talk or action that we might see? I think there's a bigger story to tell about the BRICS. It's almost three quarters of the world's population have signed on. So there was only the, you know, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, but the big one is Saudi Arabia and Iran. Now, the reason that's important is they hate America. And if you can get that picture, plus you have the Belt and Road Project, uh, you have most of the world that's not, um, I'm going to be, I'm going to hope you don't get censored of me saying this, but the world that they're going into is a non-Christian world. I'm not being, you know, religious and all this. I'm not being political. I'm saying it's, you know, Muslim, Hindu, Islam, and all this. So this is a very big move is because the world who is not white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, Christian, like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, England, they're joining up against uh, the Western currency called the dollar. And so the BRICS is not if, it's only when. Jim Records says it best. It's, 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 it's not if, it's when they switch, they switch to gold. That's what they're saying. I agree with him. Wow. I, I mean, and, and I mean, you've been, you're, you're an advocate of returning to, uh, to a gold standard. I mean, this is something that you wanted to see here in the U.S., right? Well, I, I don't like to tell people, I'm, you know, Trump is my really good friend. We wrote two books together, but I'm not political. It's a dirty game. You know, so I, I say to people, I'm not Republican or Democrat, liberal or uh, liberal or conservative. I'm a free agent. And I say to people, get back on your own gold standard. You know, why wait for the government to do it for you? Yeah. Just get on your own gold standard. So as you know, Danielle, all, all of these years, I'm a broken record. Buy gold, buy silver. Not <laughs> ETFs, buy gold, buy silver, the real stuff. And I'm going to add, you like Bitcoin too, though. I like Bitcoin because, well, the, the, we have an enemy in common. It's called the federal government, the treasury, uh, the Fed, and Wall Street. <laughs> I don't trust them. If you trust them, if you trust them, save dollars and you know get, get yourself a nice bond. I don't trust those guys. Well, speaking about your good friend, President Donald Trump, I was I was curious, obviously, to get your thoughts uh, on the indictment. I know that you tweeted uh, the current regime in Washington. You said this is from former President Donald Trump. The current regime in Washington is the single most corrupt regime in history. We are living in a two tiered system of justice, one for the left wing elites, the other for people like us. Does the indictment just add fuel to the fire for Trump? Will it just propel him higher in the popularity amongst the, the Republicans? Yeah, I think uh, the haters are gone. I mean, they've already, you know, they're, they're tired of hating the guy. And will Trump win? I think he will win simply because his base is stronger and stronger and stronger. And he's helped by the biggest campaign manager of all, Hunter Biden. You know, I mean, everything Hunter Biden, everything Hunter Biden does make Trump makes Trump look good. <laughs> Wait, you think he's going to win the whole thing, like the whole the, the, the presidency? Well, let, let me show you this book here. Yes. <laughs> I love the guy. I mean, I, I've, I spent years you know, working with him. We traveled the world together, speaking to tens of thousands of people. And those were the days when real estate was really hot. So we were talking to tens of thousands of people all over the world talking about using debt because, as you know, Daniela, the U.S. dollar is debt. It's an IOU. So what capitalists like Trump and I do is we borrow money to acquire hard assets like uh, real estate. And with the, with the proceeds, with the cash flow, the positive cash flow from my real estate, I save gold and silver. I don't save dollars. I'm a very much a hard asset person. I own oil wells simply because oil is energy and economies run on energy. So you kind of beat me to the next question because I was going to ask about Hunter Biden. How much of a shadow uh, or, or more than that really will it cast uh, for Biden? So for you, it, is it an end game for Biden that all the skeletons will come out of the closet? 
I, you know, Danielle, uh, politics is such a dirty, dirty game. You don't know. I think the saddest thing is when the Justice Department and the FBI, they seem to be politicized. They seem to be on one side. And that's the end of democracy. When I can't trust the FBI or the DOG, Department of Justice, you know, like Merritt Garland called uh, parents terrorists for questioning school boards. And so when you politicize our public agencies, that's fascism. You know, basically fascism is when a private public enterprise becomes a private enterprise. Do you? And that's what I'm concerned about. Do you welcome um, the freshness that some would say RFK brings to the campaign? I, I have tremendous respect for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I have tremendous respect for his father and, you know, John Kennedy. They're brave men, as you know. They, they gave their lives for it, unfortunately. Very brave men. And that speaks horribly about America. But, you know, when you take down your political leaders with a gun, that's not good. So I have tremendous respect for RFK. I hope he has. I don't know if he has uh, Secret Service protection yet, but I hope he does. And he doesn't. Trump he was does. denied it. That was his point, because he wasn't considered a major enough of a candidate, even though he has a Kennedy name. <laughs> I mean, you, could, you could have a name like Kiyosaki. I still get credit. You know I mean, I oh. mean, you have a Kennedy name. You must have put a target on your back. Well, that's his point. But yeah, he was denied. Yeah. And by the time this interview airs, who knows if there'll be a reversal of that. But yeah. Uh, moving on, I want to also talk about, uh, you know, earlier this month, we saw the Fitch rating services downgrading of the U.S. credit, credit rating uh, from AAA to AA. Uh, you say this, you know, bright, brace for the crash landing. This was kind of the final shoe to drop here. I mean, some people brushing this off saying whatever, it's just, a, you know, a, a credit agency, um, who cares? But you're saying, no, this is this is this is a big deal, Robert. What happened is just recently, two months ago, I think Biden or the Treasury took the debt ceiling cap off so they could print more money. As soon as they could do that, stock market took off. This is unsustainable. I mean, this is, you know, like it's compounding debt now. It's accelerating debt. And that's why, as you know, Danielle, I'm a, I'm a big gold and silver guy. I'm a hard asset person and hard oil i don't i don't buy much paper i own i own gold companies and all you know stuff like this but i don't trust the government it's that simple and you know when you look at the amount of debt and all the issues that america's facing i mean i'm sure you saw the viral video where chuck uh, tucker carlson basically brings down mike pence saying you know we've sent billions <laughs> to Ukraine and look at the situation back home here. I mean, I think you, recently we were talking about you, you were walking in Phoenix and looking at all these empty storefronts and whatnot. I mean, when is this going to get fixed, Robert? Well, I don't think it can, Danielle. That's the thing about the 1.8 trillion in debt, new debt in two months when it took 209 months to acquire the first 1.8 trillion. This is the saddest thing, Daniel, because, you know, like I'm an, I've am i been an advocate for financial education. That's why I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's why Trump and I travel the world, because we're capitalists. We're not Marxists. 